Continuing on with our review in question 5, we have a project called question5.mxd that's located in the question5 folder. You should see a couple of data layers there. One represents northeastern states, while the other layer represents all tornadoes that have occurred in them since 1950. So you can see the point feature, that's NE tornadoes, and then NE states. I right mouse click, open up the attribute table, you can see there's about 1560, there 1,565 points that have located since then, and I think we have about nine, uh, we have nine states right there. Okay, question A says, what percentage of tornadoes had at least one injury? So if I right mouse click, open attribute table, I've got a column here that represents injuries. So I want to do a selection by attribute on the layers northeast tornadoes, and I want to go injuries, and it's either I can either put in greater than zero or greater than or equal to one. So injuries is greater than or equal to one. Click apply, and then these are all of the tornadoes that had at least one M one one injury. So you can see there's 271 out of 1,565. So I can go to my calculator. I can just type in calculator right here. And I can do 271 or any type of calculator. 1565 equals this and multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And this is 17.3%. Okay, 17.3%. Next question says, how many tornadoes occurred in New York? If I right mouse click and open the attribute table, there shouldn't be anything here that says state name. So a couple ways that I can do this is that I can do the select features and highlight the state. And we're going to look at another way to do this also. Highlight state, and I can do selection by location. So I want to find all northeast tornadoes that intersect with northeast states and make sure you use selected features. So I click apply. So these are all of the tornadoes that intersect with the states. Okay, and the states that we specified. So you can see there's 343 tornadoes okay, just in New York State. 343 tornadoes in New York State. Next question says what state has experienced the least number of tornadoes. Okay, and this is where we run into our spatial join functionality that we covered in uh, that we we covered in that particular chapter. So this is called spatial join because I don't want to do this for all nine states or 50 states or, or whatever number of enumer enumeration units that we have. Okay, we do not want to do that. So I can right mouse click on states okay, and do a join. Now we previously talked about uh, attribute joins and table joins, but I can do joins with, click on join, okay, join data based on spatial location. Okay, I want to do this with northeast tornadoes, and you can see some of the questions have exactly 46 deaths. Okay, so I'm going to click on average and sum, okay, and I need to store this somewhere. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to store this somewhere. I'm going to go to my C and make sure we sit because we're going to generate a brand new layer. So instead of looking at 1,565 points, I'm going to save this in my final exam data. This is question five. I'm going to call this join output. And click OK. and I'm running a spatial join. So what we're doing right here is essentially we're counting the number of times each of those points appears or occurs within each of those enumeration units. And while we're doing that, we're adding up all the different attribute values. So when we right mouse click, open the attribute value, this kind of looks the same. Now you can see I've got state name, area, FIPS, POP2000, all these other things that we asked for before. But now I have a column here called I have a column here called count. Yeah, should be over here. I have a column here called count. Okay, and this is the number of times that each tornado, a tornado, number of times a tornado has intersected each of these enumeration units. So remember with New York, previous question we had was 343. You can see this 343 here. I can right mouse click, 
sort ascending, and we can see which one's the most or which one's the least. So in this case right here, we can see that Rhode Island is the least. Rhode Island's the least. Pennsylvania's the most. Okay, and I'm looking at the looking at the column or the attribute called count. This count represents the frequency of points that occur within each of these enumeration units, whether it's New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or whatever. And you notice if I were to add all of these up, I bet you it would add up to be 560, 1565. Last question says, what state has experienced exactly 46 tornado deaths? Okay. So as I go to the right here, I did average and sum. You can see some things here. If I added up the day of the week, for this sum, it probably wouldn't make a lot of sense here. A lot of this is going to be junk, okay? The latitudes and the longitudes. If we added up the latitudes and longitudes, it probably doesn't mean a lot. But a couple places where it does mean a lot is the injuries. So the sum of the injuries. So if I add up all the injuries in the state of Rhode Island, there'd be 23 total injuries, zero fatalities. For Pennsylvania, which I noticed was on the bottom, it would be 46 total fatalities with 970 injuries. So this question here says, what state has experienced exactly 46 injuries? So I just want to look for the, oh, it says 46 deaths, I'm sorry. Okay, so for 46 deaths, you can see it's Pennsylvania. You know, if I were to ask for what state has had exactly 700 injuries, you would see, I would look at the column that says some injury. I would see that for Connecticut. Okay, so for question D, what state has experienced exactly 46 tornado deaths? That's that sum fatale. That would be Pennsylvania. A couple other things. We can map these. Okay, so you might see some additional questions that ask about the whole idea of normalization. Because if I were to map these quantities by this count, one of the problems that you run into is that well, larger states, such as New York and Pennsylvania, might tend to have more tornadoes just because they're larger. So we might need to normalize these. And you typically normalize these by area. So you would look for an area. So you, you would look for places where we can normalize by area. So if we really wanted to, this is just an example here, we could maybe normalize it by, say, uh, I think there's a square miles here somewhere, right? area. If I normalized it by area, now we can actually start to see the, you know, the density, tornado density. So you can see Pennsylvania, um, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey have higher density of tornadoes than these other states here. So when we actually look at the, the number of tornadoes per square mile or whatever, we can do this. And we can make these units. These are per square mile. So we can move the decimal point over a few, a few places. So we can look at instead of the number per square mile, the number per, you know, 10,000 square miles or 1,000 square miles. Okay. So that's the end of question uh, number five in the review, and this covers the spatial join functionality.